Hi, I'm Brennan Simp with EB-5 United. Let's talk about the Reform and Integrity Act and the changes it made to the EB-5 program. So the Reform and Integrity Act was passed March 15th of 2022, and it made a lot of changes to the EB-5 program. The most known change is that the minimum investment amount for a targeted employment area project went from $500,000 to $800,000. Non-targeted employment area projects went from 1 million to 1.05 million. This is pretty well known uh, amongst investors worldwide. Some of the other changes that they made is that they split the targeted employment areas or the TEAs into three categories. One is rural, one is urban high unemployment, and the other is infrastructure. There's hardly any infrastructure projects. So what they did is they decided to take 20% of all the visas issued for EB-5 every year and designate those for people that invest post RIA into rural projects. Then they're taking 10% of the visas, they set those aside, and they have those for post RIA investors into urban high unemployment area projects. And then 2% go to infrastructure projects. What this does is it allows Indian and Chinese investors who were backlogged before the RIA to now invest under the RIA and obtain a green card without waiting in the previous backlog. So you can have visa availability right away. Another benefit that they gave to the rural category is that they allowed priority processing. So your I-526E petition will get approved more quickly in a rural project than it will in an urban high unemployment project. And the reason why this was done is because the two senators who wrote the bill, Grassley and Leahy, they were from Iowa and Vermont, which are small states, and they were sick and tired of seeing all the EB-5 investment go to big cities, and they wanted money to come to smaller towns. And so there are incentives to invest in rural areas, one being that you get priority processing, and the other is that you have twice as many set-aside visas to skip the backlog as you do in urban areas. The last big benefit that they gave in the RIA to investors is for US-based investors. So if you're in the US on a valid visa, when you file your I-526E petition, you can also file your change of status at that same time. Now your change of status, the I-485, is not going to get approved until after your I-526E is approved. However, you will be able to get an EAD, employment authorization document, and an AP, advanced parole travel permit, while you're waiting for your green card. So you'll be able to work anywhere in the U.S., live anywhere in the U.S., and travel in and out of the U.S. just like a green card holder while you're waiting for your green card. This was a game changer for a lot of people in the industry. Just so everyone knows, we did not create this data ourselves at EB-5 United. We were able to use it from the American Immigrant Investor Alliance webinar that they did with Charlie Oppenheim, who used to run the Visa Bulletin for decades at USCIS. Uh, Suzanne Lazaki, who runs the best EB-5 blog that there is, uh, Sean Khanna, who runs American Immigrant Investor Alliance, Halston Chavez from Galati Law, as well as Joey Barnett from Wolfsdorf Immigration. And so there was a lot of great insight on that webinar, and we were able to extract the numbers that they projected from that presentation. So let's get into how visas will be issued now and the set-aside visa categories. This is the last couple years of available visa numbers for EB-5. Now, the EB-5 fiscal year ends September 30th. So 2022 here is, that's October 1st, 21 to September 30th, 22. 23 is October 1st, 22 to September 30th of 23 and so on. This on the far left shows all of the visas available for the EB category. That's employment based one, two, three, four, five. Each year, 7% of these visas are available in the EB-5 category. Now, usually we only have about 10,000 visas available each year for EB-5, but why did we have all these extra visas the last few years? Well, it was because so many consulates around the world were shut down during COVID. And so a lot of family-based visas, the green cards were not issued to the family members. And so those trickled down into the EB categories and gave us a bunch of extra visas for all of the employment base categories the past couple of years. So let's see what the impact of that was. All right, so in 2022, we had 19,987 visas available for EB-5. Of those, 32% were set aside, right? That's 6,396. I say 32% because 20% rural, 10% high unemployment, 2% infrastructure. The other 68% go to the unreserved limit. This is for people that invest in non-TEA projects or 
their pre-RIA investors who are backlogged. So it's mostly backlogged Chinese and Indian investors and other people who are just waiting for their I-526 approval. Of all of these visas here, you can see that 10,885 visas were issued back in 2022. So we did have a few that got wasted, but the set-asides did not get wasted that year. All right. So what did happen with the 6,396 set-aside visas that did not get used? We know that they did not get used because we at EB5 United actually just a couple days ago in January of 2024 received the first I-485 change of status approval for one of our post-RIA investors. So that's the first post-RIA TEA investor to receive a green card in the program. That means in 2022 and 2023, zero of the set-aside visas were issued to any investors. 2024 is the first year that we will use any of the set-asides. All right, so how does this work? The set-aside visas are available for two years in the set-aside categories and then they get lost to the unreserved category. So you see the 6,396 set-aside visas from 2022, those were still available in the set-asides in 23, but now in 24, we lost those to the unreserved category. If those were not used this year, then they would be lost, but hopefully USCIS will issue all of those. So where are we now? You can see that from 22 to 23, we had 10,874 total set-aside visas, that's the 4478 plus 6396, and we had 9,515 unreserved total. We do not know yet how many visas were issued last year in 2023, all right? So now we come to 2024, all right? There was 161,000 visas issued for the employment-based categories, 7% is 11,431 new visas for EB-5. And you can see that 32% of that is 3,658 set aside. So the other 68%, those go to the unreserved, 7,373, right? So if you add this number plus the 6,396 set-asides that we lost this year from 2022, they rolled over two years, so that means we lose them to unreserved. That means we have 14,169 visas available for the unreserved category. So hopefully all of those are issued this year, so it continues to relieve the backlog for investors that invested before the Reform and Integrity Act. In the set-aside categories, we have the 4,478 set-asides from last year that rolled over into this year, plus 3,658 new set-aside visas. So that's a total of 8,136 visas, right? That, you can see these numbers we extracted here, is 5,085 rural visas, 2,543 high, high unemployment visas, and 508 infrastructure visas. Now, the issue is with these, in order for these visas to be issued, an investor has to file an I-526 e petition, have that I-526 e petition approved, and then if they're in the US and concurrent filed, they need their I-485 approved, or if they're outside the US, then they have to go through consular processing and get their green card that way. So you have to get all the way to the stage of consular processing or I-485 change of status approved and go th or go through your consular process and get your stamp, come to the US, boom, that starts your two-year conditional residency. You have to get to that point before a visa is actually issued. And the odds that we will have 8,136 people, post RIA TEA investors, get to the point where they are being issued a visa this year in 2024, before September 30th, is basically impossible. So it does mean that we are going to lose a lot of set-aside visas to the unreserved category again in 2025. Now the question is how many of these 4,478 visas that will roll over to unreserved next year, how many can we use by September 30th, okay? There's gonna be a lot more rural investors because of priority processing who get to visa issuance by September 30th than there are gonna be in high unemployment and I don't even know of any infrastructure deals that are in the market. So likely the infrastructure visas will roll all roll over to next year into the unreserved categories 
the high end employment set aside visas, most of these will not be utilized. So the majority of those will be lost to the unreserved total, which just lowers the amount available there. So of this 4,478 that carried over from last year, the set aside visas, about 2,800 of those are rural. So however many we can use of those 2,800, that will help to make, to prolong a potential backlog in the rural category. So we do think that we will see quite a few rural investors this year be issued a green card. We just saw the first one happen a couple days ago here in January of 2024. But it's just a matter of seeing how quickly USCIS processes a lot of these petitions and that will impact the future backlogs that will eventually happen in the reserve categories, okay? Now let's look at these categories on the visa bulletin, all right? Here, this is employment-based, one, two, three, four, five, all right? You can see that in the unreserved categories, which is pre-RIA investors and people who filed non-TEA projects. If you're from China or India, you have a backlog to December of 2020 or December of 2015 for China. All the other categories for all countries are current. Now, does that mean that if you file right now, you're not going to see a backlog in a certain category? No, that does not because this chart will not reflect a backlog until there are enough approved I-526E petitions with investors ready to take a green card. And so it takes a long time after you're actually going to have a backlog to see that backlog put onto this chart. So here you see the rural set aside visas, that's 20% of the visas, those are all current. The high unemployment shows all current and the infrastructure shows all current. Now, infrastructure probably is all current because like I said, I haven't even seen an infrastructure project yet post RIA. The, the high unemployment category, a lot of these, some of these may be backlogged already, especially India and China. And we'll get into that in a minute as to why, um, but with rural, we're likely current still right now. We'll explain that a little bit further, but there will likely be a backlog forthcoming from India and China here, maybe at the end of this year or sometime in 2025. Also, on top of the visa issuances, the, the reason why there is a backlog in countries is because each country can only take 7% of the visas each year. Now, once all the visas are issued to all the people from different countries, then if there's extra visas, they go to whoever is backlogged most. That happens every year. The rest of the world outside of China and India does not take up a ton of visas. And so every year, all the visas are issued to all the different countries. And then the extra ones are given to people that have been waiting the longest in the backlog from um, China and India. That's why there's the priority date. So as long as you apply before that priority date, you can get a green card. Now, something that was very interesting to me is that in the chart that they used in the webinar that uh, was done by AIIA, they did show that they were only calculating that 7% on the new visas issued this year, which was 11,431. If we go back, you see that's not the total amount of visas of 22,305, which this number includes all of the rollover visas from 2023. So essentially they're saying that we are unsure whether the country cap includes the rollover visas or if it's only from the new newly issued visas in the EB-5 category. So that's very interesting, which 11,431 is right at about 800 visas available. That would be 544 unreserved visas and 256 for each country split amongst the set aside categories. Now let's look at the petitions that have been received in the EB-5 program post RIA. Now we only have data through April of 2023. So this is from the end of April of 2023. At that point, we knew that China had 247 rural investors, 429 high unemployment. India, 57 rural, 180 high unemployment. South Korea, Taiwan, Vietnam, the rest of the world, you can see that the rural category is very insignificant. And you can see a lot more of those people were investing into high unemployment projects. So we already have 1,090 people that applied in high unemployment area projects at the end of April. And we only had 
377 that applied in rural projects. At the same time, we know that there are twice as many set-aside visas available for the rural category as there is for the high unemployment category. We know that this high unemployment number is leading much more quickly to a backlog within that set-aside category than the rural category. They were still consistently skewed toward high unemployment until the end of the summer when we received an I-956F approval on one of our rural projects and we started receiving rapid I-526E approvals. And so as those continue to come in, we started to see more and more investors, mainly from India and the rest of the world, coming into rural projects. Before that, we, we saw the same numbers in China before and after that time in our rural projects. What this means is since then, in April of 2023, uh, we likely saw a similar split through the summer and then we're probably starting to see a little bit more rural investment uh, catch up toward high unemployment now, but it still has a long way to go as you can see. So now let's compare these different set aside categories and see what visas are available and, and what the demand is. Here you can see this, this was not done by us again. This is a, a third party who put this together. We just put this on our branding. All right, on the left here, you see the number of I-526E filings as of the end of April of 2023, all right? Now you have to multiply these filings by about two to three because usually you have two to three visas per investor. You'll have a spouse and a child or a couple children, or sometimes it's an individual or sometimes just a couple. So usually we see it right around two and a half visas per investor, but we're looking at two and three. So this is high end, low end, all right? 429 from China that you need 858 visas. If it's two visas per investor, you need 1287 if it's three, all right? And then you can go through this and you add it all up. You need 2,180 visas to support all of the filings at, at a 2X multiplier. At a 3X, you need 3270. So this is how many visas were needed to supply all of the high unemployment investors that invested by April 30th, 2023 with a green card. So now let's look at how many visas are actually available in that category. All right, so if we look with the carryovers, you can see that in 2024, we're anticipating 2,542 visas are available for the high unemployment category. If we're on the high end, we've already taken up all of that. Now, does that really even matter? We don't know because realistically, the majority of these investors in the high unemployment projects will not get to the stage of visa issuance by September 30th of 2024. So most of these 2,542 visas will not be used this year. Maybe, maybe a couple hundred get used. So we're gonna lose carryover visas from 2023 next year in 25, because the second year they carry over, you lose those. So next year, we're only gonna have 2,137 visas available. Now, hopefully a lot of these visas or all of them are issued that year in 2025. Hopefully we have enough investors who get to the stage of visa issuance in the high unemployment category to use all these 2,138 visas. But as you can see, we already have more demand even on the low end as of last April to take all those visas. And then the next year, if we take all those visas, this is saying there wouldn't be any carryover. So you're just getting a regular year, which is almost 10,000 visas, 9,940. And you multiply that by 10% for the high unemployment set aside. That's only 994 visas available. And you can imagine there's been quite a few investors in the high unemployment category since all of these filings back in April of 2023. And so what that means is that we're leading into a very significant backlog in 2026 in this category. And now I, I don't think that this backlog will be reflected on the visa bulletin probably until either late 25 or 26 because to reflect on the visa bulletin, these investors have to get all the way through the process to visa issuance to be able to take one of the visas and so you have to get all of the investors to visa issuance stage to demand more than the visas available for it to show that it's backlogged on the visa bulletin. So, I mean, it might even be 2026 before we see a backlog on the visa bulletin. However, if you invest right now, you're likely already going to see a backlog, especially if you're from China or India. Now, the big outlying question that a lot of people have is, what they're saying is, what about the country caps within these set aside categories. Well, there's two things about that that are very important to look at going forward. All right, in this high unemployment category, you can see that the, 
the country caps in 2024 are about 178 visas for high unemployment. We already know Taiwan is reaching that, India is reaching that, China is reaching that, Vietnam and South Korea are close. And that's from back in April of last year. So what happens when these countries reach their country cap within this category, okay? If you're from India or China, you're, you're not gonna get extra visas outside of that category. But the question mark is, will the USCIS issue unreserved visas to investors in this set aside category who aren't backlogged in, un, in the unreserved category? So they're saying, let's say Taiwan, let's say they use all of their country cap, which is shown here at 150 expected in 2025, then will the USCIS issue extra visas from the unreserved category to more Taiwanese investors until they reach their full country cap, which would be 7% of 9,940. So that's just shy of 700 visas. So they're saying maybe the USCIS would issue up to almost 550 more visas to Taiwan after they reach their 7% cap within the set aside category. That is a big question is whether they're going to to issue those. Now, you can see that the rest of the world demand is pretty insignificant compared to the main five countries here combined. And so what will happen is that you know, people who invested in these projects in high unemployment areas, even after they hit their country cap, the rest of the world, whatever investors get to visa issuance, those investors are gonna get their green cards from other countries, be under their 7% cap, and there's still gonna be extra visas available for Chinese and Indian investors to take those until we get to the point that there's enough investors approved and at visa issuance to backlog this. Now, there's also an, a, a scenario where we get to where just by a certain amount of countries taking less than 7%, all of the visas within this set aside category are backlogged then the entire category could get backlogged for every single country, especially if they don't issue unreserved visas to investors that hit their cap within the set-aside category, all right? Now let's talk about the rural supply. So this is the amount of rural investors as of last April 30th, 2023, okay? So if we multiply these numbers by two, you can see the numbers here, that's 754 visas needed. If we multiply it by three, that's 1,131 visas needed, and this is the amount needed for each country. You can see we have twice as many set aside visas available for each country. The 7% cap is 356 in 2024. And with us needing 1,000 on the high end, 1,131 visas for all the investors through April 30th of 2023, you can see we clearly have that available. So now let's look in this rural category. The great thing is that we do have priority processing, so we should get more visas issued this year before September 30th than in any other category. But this 2,799 visas, these are the ones that rolled over from 2023 into 2024. So if we don't issue, if USCIS does not issue 2,799 visas to rural investors this year, whatever is not used out of that amount rolls over to the unreserved category. So hopefully, I mean, I would say there definitely will be at least a, a few hundred that get issued in this year from investors that invested into rural projects. But hopefully we can get over a thousand or get somewhere close to 2000 issued by this September 30th. If that happens, then we take up more of these and we don't lose any of these rural visas to the unreserved categories. And then uh, you have still all the visas that were issued this year, the 2,286, those get added to next year and we'd have 4,274 visas available for all the investors. It's clear that back in April, we were not even close to backlogged in the rural areas. Um, if you look at the numbers of visas that were then submitted for or I-526E petitions that were submitted by September 30th. It was close to around 2,500. So the submissions were uh, 1,090 for urban projects and 377 submissions for rural projects. So that's a total of 1,467 petitions that had been applied for. So then there's basically another 1,100 visas uh, or I-526E petitions between April and uh, the end of September. So even if all of those investors went to rural projects, we, we still wouldn't even be backlogged. Um, so that's why rural right now is, is where the majority of the focus is, is shifting to because it's clear to see that we don't have a backlog there quite yet. Now we're probably approaching that for India and China here in the new future. And that's why so many people are doing whatever they can to apply as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching this presentation. 
of the changes from the RIA and the new visa bulletin and set aside visas. I hope that this was understandable for a lot of you. Uh, you may need to do a little bit of research and rewatch this video if you didn't really understand the set aside visas or how visas are issued in the employment based categories uh, before watching this video. So I hope that you're able to understand it and please contact us at EB5 United or contact myself if you have any further questions on this. Thank you.